Well, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Harry Clint Hammer, and I'm the Interpretive Facility Coordinator out here at the E.L. Cash Museum. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here this evening uh, for this uh, exhibit unveiling uh, that was made possible through some generous funding from the National Society of Children of the American Colonists. Um, they reached out to us looking for an opportunity to help uh, promote, support, preserve, and interpret um, colonial history here in the Midwest, and we were very honored and very touched by their outreach. And I'd like to uh, start out with giving us all here a brief tour and show you uh, some of the work that we were able to do uh, because of the wonderful donation that we received from them. So if you'd like to follow me, we'll do a quick little tour. I can highlight some of the wonderful additions we have here to the museum. Uh, Kim and Amanda Nagy from the National Society of Children of American Colonists, if there was a project that we could use some funding for, um, right away, the first thing that staff and I thought of was that, well, you know, we've added this new wing with the renovation to the museum. We talk about the end of the story of the version, right? the tab is always being reversed. But we explained that we really wanted more of a hands-on opportunity for people to understand how this happened. So right away, we thought what we need is a workstation, a hands-on station for kids so they can go through the step-by-step -step process of how we turn the felt into a hat. So this is what kicked everything off. Um, as we worked on this project, staff and I realized that uh, by being able to do the work in-house uh, with the interpretive staff here, and with the generous funding, which I think believe, uh, exceeded um, their goals in terms of fundraising, we were able to expand the project uh, to add much more things. But this is kind of what started this all and triggered the whole thing. So what we have here now is a workstation where people can come up. We have this exhibit panel, which we originally had, that goes through the steps in making the video help pan. Now we have a workstation and supplies and equipment so people can mimic uh, the work process to see what it's like to make one of these felt hats. Um, and then in addition in here, to kind of help broaden the, the experience for people while they're here, uh, on this wall, uh, on the inside here, we are able to add on some more triumph clothes, um, add on some uh, hook racks so that we can have them hung up there, more things for the children and the families to come and try on when they come into the hat shop here. And then finally, too, to add to the decor in this part of the exhibit, uh, we added hat boxes. Um, if you take a look at the wallpaper mural in the back, that was the drawing of the hat boxes on the book. So, <laughs> so we decided to uh, mimic uh, the image by adding the hat boxes here to uh, the roof of the hat shop in the space. So this was kind of the early incubation of improvements that we were able to do. But then realizing the resources that we have available to us, um, we were able to add so much more um, actually out here um, in our dock area because we felt that we had some other areas or exhibits that needed a little bit more fleshing out and understanding of uh, putting the story into context visually for people. And again, I, I would like to point out that um, this was also made possible because of the great work and skill and craftsmanship of the staff here at the museum. Um, all the upgrades and additions that we were able to do were either things that were purchased as is that we did as additions, or in the case of this workstation, uh, this was actually built by museum staff. Yes, 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 this is awesome. I would definitely like to acknowledge and recognize the staff here at the museum for the wonderful job that they did for stuffing off this place. Mimic 
adopt either um, in New France or back in Europe so that we can kind of tie in the fur trade into the larger global marketplace that was going on at the time. Um, however, um, it was not in the plans to have it as elaborate as it currently is. So again, with the funding that was provided to us by the National Society of Children of the American Colonists, and the great handiwork of the staff, including Jen, I'm going to point out over there, uh, staff came in on their day off, and in one day, uh, <coughs> dismantled this entire area, built the dock, and then remounted all the items back onto the dock. So now it has more of a seaside kind of look and feel to it, uh, with this pier and dock area. And then uh, added to that, we're able to add some more uh, visuals and interactions here. Um, specifically, again, we talk about how the, the fur trade was part of a larger global trade. Uh, we included now a, a sensory kind of like a spice rack uh, with cinnamon, coffee, and pepper um, inside there, because these would have been other items that would have been trading across back and forth the Atlantic Ocean along with the beaver furs. Again, trying to tie into that larger picture and now we had the opportunity to do that through, uh, through sense as well, through smell. Um, we were able to add some more pieces to here, specifically um, the French flag, again to kind of show and tie in that we are talking about French colonial history here at this time. Um, so again, uh, we, this really kind of brings the story out a bit more uh, visually, so that it helps break from the more it's a wilderness type stories that we talk about of the Native Americans and the fur traders out in the wilderness. So we see more of an urban setting here, uh, which is actually a nice segue then to uh, the final part of improvements that we were able to do. And that connects to putting the hat shop into context. We thought that this space right here um, just kind of felt a little isolated um, when the renovations were done in 2007. Uh, the wall here was just a blank space. And so there was really nothing here to kind of help tell you that this is a hat shop in an urban setting, whether it's Montreal or it's Quebec or it's somewhere in France. Um, it was just kind of plopped here without really a good proper context for it. So with remaining funds, uh, what uh, the staff was able to do here is we added the uh, European style uh, benches to try and get more of an urban feel. Uh, staff then actually, through uh, sketching and shadowing, added the silhouettes of the trees themselves. Uh, we added on them the lamp too to help uh, add to the streetscape. And then the final component, uh, which was not ready for the unveiling tonight, unfortunately, um, is that we are adding a, a broom hedgerow, which is going to be right where Marcy is sitting. So that is what it will look like. Uh, we actually we did put the bench there that Marcy is sitting on to kind of give a sense of scale and perspective for the hedgerow. Um, and then we'll also have another bush off into the corner. Uh, again, to kind of give it more of an urban park-like setting uh, to put the hatch up into. Um, a better context for telling this story. Um, and then finally, uh, with, uh, the, we still had a little bit of money left over, and a project that we've been wanting to have done here since the renovation in 2007 was that we realized, um, particularly in colder weather, which you don't necessarily think of today when we're having a heat ending of 100 uh, <laughs> but we didn't really have anywhere for people to put their coats when they come to visit. So now, when they are coming to the building, they would have to be carrying their jackets over their arms, or they're keeping them on and getting, keeping them on and getting warm. So uh, with, the, with the few remaining dollars that are left over after all this work, um, we bought the materials and staff built an accessible coat rack, uh, which is now just uh, by the entrance, between the entrance of the museum and the washrooms. And so it's a canoe paddle with coat hooks on it. So it kind of tied into the interpretive theme of the site. So um, this is what we were able to do with the generous funding from the National Society of Children of the American Colonists. Uh, it's helped 
staff and I uh, fulfilled some goals and dreams and wishes that we had in terms of uh, expanding the interpretive theme and the context for this area. Um, it definitely helped flesh out this addition to the story that we've done here. And um, we're just very thankful that we had this opportunity. And it, I think it's really made a big difference in the interpretation that we do here. So I'd like to thank you. Nice job, guys. Amanda Navy, who was the honorary president, National Society Children of the American Colonists. So if you wouldn't mind to have a
lives in Florida, so she couldn't be here, um, asked me to just say a few words on her behalf. Um, I, I'm the first vice president general. Um, she says, uh, greetings. The National Society of Children of the American Colonists is proud to support the museum and this exhibit to promote knowledge of America's, America's colonial heritage outside the 13 original colonies. I want to congratulate our honorary national president, Amanda Nagy, and honorary president general, Dr. Richard Klaus, and all of our members and adult advisors who worked so hard during her term. Their efforts and yours will contribute to a greater understanding of the economy and lifestyles of the people who came together to forge this country. Thank you for your recognition tonight of the efforts of our young people to support this fine cause. And best wishes for a successful and informative exhibit. Charlene Perry, President General. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, the President of the Board of Commissioners of the Fort Reserve. District of Will County, Mr. Joe Babich. You know, it's going to be pretty hard to follow these two young ladies, so. <laughs> but I'd like to say good afternoon to everybody. And on behalf of the Forest Reserve District of Will County, the Board of Commissioners, I'd like to thank Amanda Nagy and the Children of the American Colonists for this generous donation to the Forest Reserve Island of Cash Museum. And uh, it was in my very first term that I was elected that this, this uh, right. place became available. And it was, it was a hard to, a hard to get a piece of property, but we finally did it, and here it is. Uh, I, by the way, I was elected in 1982. Yeah, so. <laughs> 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 our, our museum is devoted to the fur trade era, which was concurring here in the Midwest at the time colonists on the East Coast first started protecting that, prote protesting the taxation imposed by England. For Amanda to single out the Isla Cash Museum to focus on a project outside of the original 13 colonies is most gratifying. The donation not only recognizes the quality of the museum as it exists today, but also the decision made 30 years ago by the Forest Reserve to create the museum. The French and Indian fur trade helped open up the interior of the continent and brought together two different cultures who traded for the betterment of both parties, peoples. So thank you, Amanda. We thank, we thank your organization is wonderful in its goal of pro, uh, promoting patriotism, and you certainly have impressed the Board of Commissioners and the Forest Preserve District of Old County with your gift to the Isle of Cash. So once again, thank you, ladies. Well, thank you. Um, there are a few other honored guests who are here that I'd like to recognize, unless there's anyone else who would like to say a few words. Um, I'd also like to recognize who's with us today, uh, Donald Moran, who's our commissioner here from District 3 in Romeoville, so thank you for coming out this evening. Um, Marcy DeMauro, uh, Executive Director of the Forest Preserve District of Oval County. Also we have with us this evening is Colin McLeod, who is the Illinois State President for the oh, National great. Society Children of the American Communists. Mm -hmm. She was able to join us this evening as well. So thank you all for coming with.